Our story begins June 30th of 2019 at about 3 p.m. Or, I mean, at least I think it was 3 p.m. Look, it was four years ago. My memory's a bit fuzzy. I can barely remember what I had 15 minutes ago. I was walking down the street touching grass as I normally do, but when I turned the corner, I saw... Holy shit! Something shiny sat under an abandoned building. So upon making eye contact, I approached it. Holy shit! Except I didn't actually say that because my grandma was there. Really <laughs> fucking SMG4 reference? I'm gonna steal the fuck out of this. So I began to pick it up, however, my grandmother interjected. <laughs> Can I come back for it tomorrow, please? It will. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, Mamma mia! <laughs> so we journeyed back home, and I laid down to rest. It ended up raining pretty hard that night. So I woke up at the ass crack of dawn. But let's be honest, here is me, so it's probably like 12 p.m. or something. I returned to the scene of the crime, and it was sopping wet, but so was I, to be perfectly honest with you. I put it in the trunk, and we started our journey back home. Or, I mean, something's happened in between that, but it's not important. Anyways. Yep, that's a pretty small box. I didn't have a lot of space to take this thing back, so I took only the most important pieces. Like, uh, wow, two gigabytes of RAM, really? It's actually kind of a lot. Oh, and the IO shield. Um, don't worry, it's uh, definitely supposed to look like that. And a Celeron of some description connected to a mystery socket 478 motherboard. Oh, and this CPU cooler, it's pretty important to do, do need one of these. Taking a look at everything together, we have a fairly solid socket 478 build, with its 2GB of DDRM at 400 mega transfers, or PC3200 by PNY. Wait, since when does PNY make RAM? Running the show, we have a Celeron D at 2.8GHz with 256KB of cache, connected to a mystery motherboard with mystery integrated graphics. Oh, this will be a treat. After we test it, of course, this should give us a pretty alright platform to build on, but as we can see, we are missing a couple pieces. Most immediately important, something to power it with. Luckily, I have this era appropriate Seasonic power supply. With that aside, let's plug this rusty fire hazard in and see what kinds of beeps it makes. Sadly, my Arctic Silver is a little out of date, but for this, like, Nepper Celeron, it should be A-OK. -okay. I absolutely despise these coolers. Why did they ever do it like this? You gotta, like, clamp it in with these, like, stupid thumb things. At least it's better than AMD's solution, but... It's a pretty low bar, guys. Wow. And just in case, I don't know how to plug the speaker. Alright, alright, all right. I, I got this, I got this. I'm gonna look up standard tab. Bruh, where does it go? Ah, well that's fine, I'm gonna need a speaker where we're going. Whoa. 
Oh, that's right, you do kinda need to see. Um, right. Oh, wait, that's the wrong way. Derp. All right, here's the moment of truth. No fireworks so far. Uh, nope. Nope. Little noise. Oh, I forgot to plug the damn, Jesus Christ. Guess it would help if I actually plugged it in. All right, one more time. Oh, it's running right up this time. Okay, fair enough. Holy shit! Okay, all right. The IO shield looks like this. And it works. A little, a little noisy. But it, it works. All right, well, let's get an operating system on this thing. But what operating system, you might ask? Well, wait, what's going on over there? Uh, that's new. Um, oh no. Oh no. Now it's not displaying anything. Oh, uh, okay. Um, well, hmm. Well, um uh, uh um uh well um luckily i have this hep graphics card and we're gonna give this a try hopefully this geforce 2mx is uh better all right well that's better i guess i should be glad that's this computer's only issue right yeah let me Anyways, operating system. Well, this is a Celeron D from 2004, so there's really only one correct option. That's right, the gold standard of computing, Microsoft Windows XP. Yeah, let's get this sucker in there. Yeah, I changed my mind. You know what? CDs suck. Did you know that Rufus can make bootable USB thumb drives of Windows XP? Yeah, me neither until like today. Okay, let's try this again. actually worked. Well, we've all installed Windows XP before, so I'll spare you the experience. The important part is even after some drivers, I can't do all that much. Minecraft is a pixel-flavored slideshow and Half-Life 2 can barely run. So let's give this thing an upgrade and see just how much ass this netbrush on can kick. But before that, a message from- First things first, for a case, I went with this, a Raid Max Scorpio, in yellow, a apparently. 
I originally used to house my first desktop computer, this case, while looking a bit dated, is just as dated as the components we'll be putting inside of it, so I believe it'll be a great fit for this system and probably one of the best uses for this case. Maybe now people will stop asking me to put my main computer inside of it. For a graphics card, this was an obvious choice, an ASUS Tech NVIDIA GeForce 6800 with 512 megabytes of VRAM. While not the fastest for the AGP interface, for its time it was a real 3D powerhouse. With its DirectX 9.0C and OpenGL 2.0 compatibility, it will definitely perform better than the 2MX we've been testing with, and for our CPU I believe it'll be a fair match. And I will also add some more decoration-oriented items like these, dual 12-inch cold cathodes. Unlike regular LED strips, these things have a look which in my opinion is just so much more full of color than LEDs, which I guess makes sense given their broader light output. To cool things down, I also have three red 80mm LED fans. Sadly, they don't make cold cathode fans, otherwise I would have gotten some. And lastly, a Sound Blaster Live Platinum from my first computer. Onboard audio from this time is notoriously terrible, so I can't think of a better place to put it. As for a CD-ROM drive, I chose absolutely nothing special. It can read CDs, and that's all we really care about. Same for the hard disk, it can store data just fine. For now anyways, and hopefully till the end of this video. So why not get yourself a can of Monster, or a coffee if you prefer, and let's start building, shall we? Well, shit, I guess I am making this video, aren't I? 
So, besides being extremely noisy, what exactly can this thing do? And well, something I've noticed is recently these computers are used less as computers and more of uh, virus-prone game consoles that also run Windows. Very close to being an Xbox. Uh, besides that, you could like totally use this thing to run like Office XP or Office 97. But I mean, I can't really imagine how down bad you gotta be to run Microsoft Office on a fucking Celeron from 2004. I mean, like literally whatever you're watching this on would be faster. But I mean, hey, if the option's there. Um, but I don't really think some benchmarks of Microsoft Excel would be uh, that interesting. So um, let's just try running some games and see how those perform. I'm sure that'll give us a pretty good measure as to how powerful this thing is. Firstly, a forgotten classic, GTA 3, or at least I think it is. I was born like two years after this game came out, so not really my place to say, is it? Point is, with an average FPS of 45 and some weird stuttering issues, I kinda expected better for a game from 2001. Second of all, and no less classic, we have Minecraft 1.8.9 Local Single Player. With an average FPS of 21 and a maximum of 61, but spending most of its time near 10 and 15 to be honest with you, I would consider this a passable but not really that great experience. 10 year old me would have been well satisfied with it though. Nextly, Roblox, using a client from 2011. Now I'm sure you're wondering how exactly did I get this to work without time travel? And the answer is Novitas. It's an open source project that emulates Roblox's client and server architecture. With my desktop running a dedicated server and a seller on running the client, we should have fairly similar performance to that of what it would have been back in 2011. And with an average of 42 FPS, I'd consider this well playable. Though, uh, not that great. And lastly, but far from leastly, we have Garrett's Modification by Volvo Software. And it runs way better than it should. With a frame rate mostly between 14 and 18, this has got to be the most stable 14 FPS I've ever experienced. In fact, I would consider this like the second to most playable of what we've tested, and should be very enjoyable as long as you're okay without balloons and shipping containers full of ragdolls. Don't tell it, but I think that Celeron is really bottlenecking us. That graphics card should be able to pull way better than that. So, I know what you're probably thinking. Hey Snoopy, did you just do all that testing on Windows? That's not very WGE of you. You should be doing that testing on Linux. Why didn't you install Linux on this thing? That would have made performance so much better. Install Linux, you gay computer hermit. I, I, I mean, we could. We could do that. Hey furries, Draga621 here, and today we're going to be installing Linux on the curbside Celeron PC. Those are words I never thought would come out of my mouth, but I suppose I can't do a video too differently, otherwise there will be riots in the streets. Especially after this long, goddamn, how long has it been? What, like six months? Anyway, so what kind of Linux are we gonna put on the system? And well, since this computer is 32-bit, we don't really have that many choices, but I think it would be interesting if we tried Adelaide, because, you know, the Linux distro that's kind of known for running on 30 32-bit power PC machines, but uh, they also have a 32-bit version, and I'm kind of interested to see how that'll go. Normally, I would use something a little bit more text-based, like, you know, Debian or uh, Arch Linux 32, but the goal here is to run, like, actual graphical applications, and a uh, li little secret, I, um, I, I, I don't know how to install the graphical user interface on Arch Linux. I know it's, it's terrifying, but, uh, yeah. Uh, so we're gonna use Adelaide. Um, God damn it, it's so bright you can see how dirty my monitor is. Anyway, so, you know, you see what I mean? We got PowerPC 32 and PowerPC 64, but let's go for regular 32. I really want desktop. LXQT, really? They actually have one with LXQT. Hmm. Well, that is probably lighter than XFCE, and let's just go with that, I guess. So, uh, yeah, that sounds good. I value. I never actually tried the CD-ROM drive. Oh God. Well, it was three dollars a Goodwill, so it can't be that bad. Yeah. What the fuck? It's literally in the drive. What do you mean? I guess that's why it was three dollars. Oh my god. 
Don't buy the three dollar disc drive from Goodwill. Worst mistake of my life. Alright, give it back. Come on. Thank you. Alright, I ain't messing around. Does this thing even have a writer? DVD RW. Oh, okay, that'll work. Battery is dead. Guess we'll have to plug the bastard in. Where's it go? Hell yeah. It's not broken. That's, that's good. So fucking bright outside. Alright, open up. Where did I put it? What the fuck? Hi, Valley. Uh, yeah. And... Yeah, probably. Alright, now I just gotta wait like five years. Hey, hey, get it? This, this folder? That, that folder? It's, it's fucking, it's, it, it's fucking called SEGEX. Because if you switch the first two letters around, it, it spells out gay sex. I found <laughs> Uh, I don't know if that's how you spell Adelaide. That's like entirely from memory, so I hope I got it right. Like, I know what it is, I just burned it, so, you know, that's good. Oh shit, I just realized. This computer is currently running Windows XP. I don't know if Adelaide can dual boot. I gotta put like a different hard disk in here. You don't wanna watch me do that, do you? Oh god, okay, well I'll make it quick. Ah, shit. Ignore that mess, please. Where the fuck is my screwdriver? Oh, there it is. Fucking rat's nest in here, dear god. I don't know what's on here, but I do know whatever it is, it's not gonna stay. Almost. I gotta put this, like, under here, between these two things, and then... No, yep, no, 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 oh, oh, okay, alright. Okay, I almost got it. I almost got it. Oh god, no, wait. <laughs> what the hell? What's it caught on? I fucking got it! I fucking got it in! Holy shit, okay. It is set to the crack jumper setting, right? No, but it's also not that hard to change. Cable select. There we go. What did I have plugged into the hard drive? I don't remember. Oh, okay, they're both unplugged. And this will be power for the graphics card. I'll take this and I'll stretch it a little bit and I'll put it in there. And there we go. If we want to use XP again, we just need to take the wires out of this drive and put it in this one. Dual booting, but very bad. So I gotta turn it back on first. Oh, okay, there we go. All right, the keyboard seems happy. Yeah, that sound doesn't get old. All right, Celeron, 2.8 gigahertz, the memory is testing. Drive should be detected. Okay, it's taking a little long. Okay, cool, so we got Western Digital, and we have the LG CD-ROM drive. Sick, that's, that, that's good. That's really good. Should probably boot into DOS to make sure there's nothing on it though. There's just something about these colored floppy disks. I just, I love them so much. I don't know. A little translucency. I'm kind of sad it went away, to be honest. Okay, so assuming the drive isn't bootable, we should boot the floppy. We should, we should boot the floppy. <laughs> right? Yes, okay, cool. Mouse.com. Okay, so let's see. Is it FAT32 at least? No. No, it's not. Okay. That's interesting. I wonder if, like, Speed Sys can make anything out of it. Dare slash W. Okay, Speed Sys. Huh. I kind of thought the Sauron was faster than the Athlon 2000. 
Huh. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Well. And what we're going to do is test hard drive zero. All right. Well, the drive works. That's 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 good. I think this drive is faster than the drive I uh I installed XP on. Oh boy. That's great. Alright, so now that this hard disk has a clean bill of health, let's install Debian! I, I mean Adelaide! Yeah! <laughs> oh god. Wow. It's either broken or really fancy how slow that tray opens. And, uh, put the, put the disk in. Holy balls, it soft closes! Fuck, I didn't mean to do that. Stop, 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 stop! Oh, a control seat? No, it's escape. There we go. Well, it is DOS, so I'll just uh, control and delete. Ah, alright, who reset the CMOS? Oh my god. Alright, well, two seconds. Uh, oh, wrong button. Oh well, that's fine. I don't know if this drive actually works. Oh, that is a yes. Cool. Hell yeah, let's go. It is now booting the Linux kernel. Well, I uh, guess we're in, but how do I install the operating system, though? Uh, why am I switching desktops? What the fuck? How? Oh, mouse mouse wheel on desktop switch. I'm not sure if I like that very much. Is there an installer application or uh, graphics, internet? Sound system tools. System installation. Wow. Okay. Oh, well, I'm liking this so far. It's the first time I've seen the installer look like, you know, uh, hello, I'm installing fucking Half-Life Blue Shift on Windows XP. Continue. Keyboard layout. That would be uh, American. So we're going to erase and use whole disk. Uh, yeah, automatic. That should work. Obtain a network address. Oh fuck. Review DHCP log. No such user DHCP CD. I'm gonna make sure it's plugged in. Oh, that would do it. It's not it's not plugged in. Yeah that yeah okay, alright. Well I'm gonna plug it in then. Automatic. Nice. That works a lot better when it's plugged in. <laughs> KDE Plasma on this thing, could you imagine? Yes, I definitely live in Indianapolis. Uh, of course I do. Alright, well, uh, goddamn. There we go, that's fucking awesome! Oh my god, it's still going. It smells awesome though, I knew that was a good idea. So, I was gonna put one on the power supply, but I'm out of paper clips. Though, I, I do have this thing. Shit! Now that, that's a work hard, that's perfect. Holy piss, it's actually done. All right, so I'm just gonna eject the thing like it said. All right, moment of truth, time to see if this damn thing actually boots up. Oh my God. Okay, all right, so I need a new CMOS battery. God damn it, for now. Oh, okay, all right, so we do have Grub, that's good, and there's Adelaide Linux. Okay, so it does work. Linux is successfully installed. I guess I shouldn't have expected any less. It's not like we're doing anything that strange. Open RC, really? Fine. Uh, desktop environment, oh. Okay. 
That's not good. I, oh, oh shit. Um. Okay. No. Okay. Go. Uh, okay. So I signed in. It, it's not the thirty-first of December, two thousand three. Okay. Welcome to KGPG Assist. Set up face configuration options required for... yeah, okay. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yes. Okay, well... The desktop is good. Like, this works. Mostly. It's just the greeter that's broken. Well, I'll, I'll take that. That's okay. That's fine. It's, once you log in, it's, it's fine. That's okay. Yeah, that, that's a win! That's a win! So now that we have Linux actually installed on the computer, what exactly can it do? And well, that's what we're gonna find out. First of all, let's try YouTube, for obvious reasons. Where the fuck is the web browser? Uh, this is a mail application, actually. Okay, um, well that's useful to someone, someday, I, I guess. Is there anything else? Oh. Well, that sounds like a web browser. Well, that doesn't breed confidence. This looks like fucking Netscape Navigator. Well, uh, maybe I could install Chromium. Uh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, God. No one asked for this feature. I can drag the web page like a fucking mobile browser. All right. Oh, so it's just APK ad. All right, that's fair. Um, let's, let's try it. Uh, terminal? What the fuck do you mean there's no X term? Uh, oh, okay, but there is Q terminal. Okay, that'll, that'll work. APK add Firefox. Uh, how do we not have APK? How is, how, what? What? Back into the installer, I guess. I don't know. Fuck, I have ideas. Uh, APK doesn't work on the install CD either? Oh god, that's not good. Okay, so, uh, yeah, uh, custom, actually. That would, that would do good. Um, desktop environments, so we're gonna want LXQT. I guess documentation's cool. What the fuck, it comes with games? Holy shit, it has open TTD, hell yeah. Oh, uh, yes, please. Um, and, you know, well, nah, we only need Firefox. Office productivity software. I'll take that. Programming environments. Um. Yeah, I'll install the Rust one. <laughs> MariaDB? Imagine using this thing as your fucking database <laughs> server. <laughs> oh god. Individual window managers that are not part of a desktop environment. Yeah, I probably don't need those. I am excited to see if it actually installs Firefox, though. Uh, sh um, bash. It's <laughs> sys v in it, and yes, we want one of those. All right, uh, it's got to do all this shit again. Well, you know what they say: second time's a charm. Oh god. Oh, would you look at that? It's done. I can't wait for this thing to not work. Hopefully, that's the last time I'll need to use this, at least in this video. Well, it did install the bootloader, that's good. All that needs to work is Firefox and OpenTTD, and I'm happy. I would prefer a functional package manager, but that might be asking for too much, the way things are looking currently. Sorry, I canonically don't know how to log into my computer, that's a little embarrassing. Oh my goodness, look at that, that's kinda cute, I like that. Okay, well now it's time to see, does APK work? Uh, no, APK does not work. Okay, well, let's see if anything else is installed. Assuming Exorg wants to cooperate. 
it does not. It does not want to cooperate. All right, I'm gonna install this one more time, and if this doesn't work, I'm going to piss myself. Uh, is the CD-ROM drive dying literally before my eyes? Uh, I think it is. I think the CD-ROM drive is actually dying. Well, you know what they say, third time's a charm, and that's actually a saying, so it'll actually work this time, right? Well, that's, uh, yeah, hopefully. Well, at least that's the theory anyway. I don't have much else to work on. Time to see if that actually did anything, if that's actually any different, or if that's just the same thing again. So, I didn't really set it up that differently versus last time, but this time I didn't install anything KDE related, and I also um, installed the greeter this time, so in case that was part of what's making it not want to start X correctly and start LXQT correctly, I just wanted to cover that base and see if it actually works. So hopefully this time we'll have at least a working desktop environment, hopefully. Now it, it should start the greeter. It, it should start the greeter. You know, SDDM? You know what I mean? So, SDDM is not loading. That's great, it's been five minutes. That's uh, long enough. Okay, we're in Adelaide text mode. Let's see if Start X works any better. No, because it's trying to start KDE again. Okay, there's one last thing I want to try. Okay, so I just wrote start LXQT to the X in it, RC. So now if I type start X, it should start LXQT. Oh my god. Is that actually going to work? It fucking worked! It actually fucking worked! Holy balls! Okay, what kind of programs we got? The, the, the mouse doesn't work. The fucking mouse doesn't work. The, the mouse is bro- What? What? The keyboard doesn't work either. The keyboard and the mouse do not work. I- the mouse is broken, and the keyboard is broken too. In fact, the keyboard is so broken, even, like, the numpad and the ca the caps lock key doesn't do shit either. I'm gonna restart it and try one more time. I rebooted it and nothing has changed. On the keyboard, if I press the numlock button, the numlock light does not light up. So, the computer is probably frozen. Why? I don't know. I have no idea. None. So that, that's why I didn't try Linux. I kind of figured that would happen. Um, slim pickings on x86 these days. And as we can see of those pickings, uh, even the best are not that great. <laughs> so as you've probably guessed, this computer means quite a bit more to me than just some computer I found out on the street four and almost five years ago now. Um, Every component in this system, besides the CPU, RAM, and motherboard, are from my first desktop, um, most notably the case. My first desktop was the one that set me down on this path and taught me what I know about computers. If it weren't for a misplaced jumper and a failed motherboard nearly 10 years ago now, I'm not sure if Snoopy would exist. I'm not really sure if I would exist. It's really strange seeing it so close to as it was back then and even better nowadays. You know, with the cold cathodes and everything, it's just as 10-year-old me would have wanted, especially a correctly configured hard drive. <laughs> Thank you for um, indulging me on this five, six, nearly seven-month disappearance of mine. Um, it means a lot that you came back after all this time, and especially watched this far to the end. Like, what is this, a 40-minute video at this point? So, that's it, right? The video's done, everything goes back to normal. You know, the way I used to make videos and everything, but... I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Not knowing scares me less than it used to. You know, you know, some people say that 
you never really know where you're going until you get there. After everything I've seen and been through in the past seven months, and even before that, I'm inclined to believe them. But something I do know for certain is I'm excited to see what happens. And I hope you are too. It hurts to say goodbye again after all this time, but I'm sure we'll meet again in due time. Until then, I'll uh, see you on the other side. Goodbye.